Hello guys, Reza here. Welcome to another how to video. In this one, I'm going to address a very common question, how to use normal maps inside Substance Painter using anchor points, which makes the blending or the integration absolutely flawless. So let's get started. Let's talk about what an anchor point is. Anchor point is a really good way to reveal or link any elements you have in the layer stack inside the layer panel. Let's say you have your smart material all constructed and all of a sudden there is an element that you would like to add or reference to any of the layer stacks that you may have. You may have 10 folders, one folder, two folders, and there's an element like a normal map in our case, you would like to reference it and incorporate it and blend it to your hierarchy that's where you use anchor points. So anchor points is a reference point that can be applied to your layer stack and you can kind of retrieve information, share information and blend that element into your hierarchy. A very, very nice and powerful feature inside Adobe Substance Painter. The only limitation, at least for this version, is you can have an anchor point per texture set. You cannot reference your anchor point from one texture set to another texture set. In this case, I have three texture sets. One is the base. The other one is the cylinder that connects the base and the lever. And the other one is the wood lever. And the whole thing should be ideally be hooked on the wall. It's just a normal scene. Let's see how we can first things first, insert a normal map on this base and then how we can use the power of anchor points to bring in all the color chips and grime and dirt into our normal map and kind of blend that in into our scene. Now, first things first, you need to nominate the texture set and um, think about, okay, what texture set I should be using for this normal map. In my case, the idea that I have in mind is to have some sort of a handle here and a few vents on the top portion of the base. So I'm using the base for the normal map. That's what I'm selecting. Next, you need to have a layer that is dedicated to your normal information and your anchor points. It's best not to use the existing layers or folders that you may have, but just go ahead and create a simple layer. Oh, that layer drops itself inside the folder. So I'm just gonna left mouse and drag it, bring it outside. And I'm going to call this normal. That's where I put all the normal maps. That's where I connect my anchor points to. Simple as that. Now, because I'm using this layer only for normal information, I really don't need to have color, metal, roughness, and height information, right? Because I'm not going to use them. These channels are gonna be practically empty. So I might as well turn them off and it all leaves me with normal information. That's why the brush is turning this color, which is a normal map, typical looking color, because that's the only channel that is available for this layer. Okay, now it's time to um, think about, all right, uh, let's pick a design and assign our normal map to this layer. Now, if I look into my library, the first tab is usually material. The second tab is usually smart material. And then I have smart masks and then I have uh, filters, brushes, so on and so forth. Usually the typical scenario is you need to go into textures to find normal maps. So these are some default normal maps that 
ships with uh, Adobe Substance Painter and um, there's a variety of designs you can choose from of course you can have your own normal map bring it into your project so on and so forth so let's see what we have here um, circle button slice actually looks pretty good for this area as well as this one circle button steps let us let's see what else is in there I'm going to scroll down there's some of them are usually at the end and hope oh, there's one called actually handle handle number 16 that's a good one there's another one handle circle let's actually use that one instead so I can't just click and expect substance to understand that I want to use this I actually need to drag and drop it into normal section down here underneath the properties panel so left mouse button click and hold and I'm going to drag it onto normal channel now my brush now changes to this design now hopefully you all know uh, how to use Substance Painter but in case if you don't know how to change the size of this brush the opacity of this brush or even the orientation of this brush here are the few tips to increase the size or reduce the size of the brush I'm using brackets left brackets right brackets to change the size of course I can use control right mouse button to change the size now control held down up and down is going to soften the brush and harden the brush soften and harden which is um, quite important because I want this to be at 100% I want this brush not to have any fall off or blurry edges so control right mouse button left to right changes the size same as the brackets on your keyboard right mouse button control up and down changes the fall off of your brush what about rotation or opacity well of course you have um, some buttons here to change the opacity uh, to change the flow but I tend to use the shortcuts as well again control this time instead of right click I'm holding left mouse button so left mouse button left and right changing the flow if you look at the top of the screen the flow also changes so that changes the opacity and up and down is going to rotate it so I'm going to use rotation I'm going to probably use it like so so it's not 100% accurate give it a bit of a slant for organic look and that looks good now once you decide on the size the orientation and the opacity then all you need to do is click by the way uh, just a quick tip if you're in angle and you would like to get to um, sort of a orthographic all you need to do is while you're rotating you're holding down shift and it snaps to front that's it so I'm just going to pick here somewhere in the middle and click fantastic we have our normal I'm going to go alt and get to the top holding down shift snap so I'm in the top section let's look for some vents um, I'm just going to scroll down what do we have here not much what do we have here that's actually looking good so that's a good candidate um, let's see what else do we have oh that's good that's um, yeah event number 37 again we cannot click on it we are going to left mouse drag and drop it into our normal section now my brush changes to that I need to straighten this and we already know how to do it I'm going to probably go one and two and three I know it's not hundred percent accurate but we'll get the job done for now all right once that's done to kind of get rid of this icon because it kind of stays with you no matter what uh, you just go and click cross and that goes away so you don't click that design to onto anything else by accident 
All right, cool. Now, um, let's say I want to have some paint chip, some decay on this. Uh, I know I've put some rust in there already. You know, I just grime and dirt on the corners using the curvature map already. But let's say I want to add more to it. So I'm going to... Um, just use my material here, smart material. Let's see what we have. I'm just going to scroll all the way. Maybe aged scratched metal. So left click, drag and drop and place it right on the top. Right. And then I'm going to create a mask, add a black mask. And all I need to do is to add a generator probably going to use a uh, metal edgeware that's a good one to create some sort of a uh, decay so it shows that this uh, sort of item has been sort of used and abused so before and after and because it's a procedural type of generator you can always go and play around with the levels and kind of intensify the effect if you want so I can just play around with it a little bit now that looks cool but there's a problem here and uh, that problem is I'm sure you have noticed um, this generator completely ignored our normal map and that's the problem that you run into if you don't know the power of anchor points now let's see how we can use anchor points to reference that metal edgeware and link it to our normal map. So we should be able to see after that a little bit of edgeware around the edges of our normal map as well, because right now it's not attracting any edgeware whatsoever, which is very unrealistic and it looks super fake. Let's go to the next chapter and see how we can start with anchor points. So to start with anchor points, you have to select the layer that is responsible for your normals and just right click on it and say, I would like to add an anchor point. That gives you a reference, something that other layers can link into, can hold onto. And usually the name of the anchor point is the name of your layer. If you would like to change it, of course you can anchor point simple as that so you can change the name if you want now it says references there is no reference at the moment uh, you need to think about all right what you would like to reference what you would like to link this to now at the moment what gets under my skin is this metal edgeware pretends that this normal map is invisible or doesn't even exist so this is the one that i need to target and link it to my anchor point. So I'm going to click Metal Edgeware and scroll all the way down and make sure I'm looking at image inputs as well and make sure that I get to Macro Normal. I'm going to click on it and well it says what would you like to look for is that going to be a resources or is that going to be an anchor point of course we would like to have an anchor point and there we have our normal anchor point that we've just created i'm going to click on it so it's part of the macro normal but uh, we just don't end it in there it says all right what is the reference channel how would you like to reference it how would you like to link it to that normal layer that you created what is it that it's on this layer is that base color information well we all know that it's normal information right so almost done we can see that we still don't have anything in there because there's just one more step one tiny step that you need to do and that is on the same layer metal edgeware we have macro details and it says macro height we haven't talked about macro height macro normal yes that's what we want at the moment it's off we turn this on and voila you can see now this normal attracts all the 
edgeware that we introduced for the entire model and it's kind of blending in now. You can see um, before, after, before, after. That's exactly what we wanted. So you can see how powerful anchor points are to enhance the look of our normal maps when we use these maps inside Adobe Substance Painter. That should do it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you use anchor points in your projects in the future. I try to see if I can incorporate more tips and tricks on anchor point and how to use them in conjunction with other layers as well so you can use them in your scene. Hope you found this video useful. You can download this via Patreon page. You know all of that. So have a great rest of your day, guys. And until the next video, see you guys soon.